Mm. Women have power over everything. It's women in power. Andrew Tate would hate this one now. <laughs> yeah, this is Andrew Tate's least favorite anime. Oh yeah, he could he could not watch this one. Man gets trapped in a dating simulator world that he mastered. Anime recap here. Today I'm going to explain a fantasy romance anime called Trapped in a Dating Sim. The world of otome games is tough for mobs. What? Ahead, watch out. And take care. In games is tough for mobs. Sport yeah, goodness gracious, bro. That pendant is beautiful. That's something I would want to buy for myself. Yeah, that that pendant is a um, fantastic, bro. Beautiful pendant. Ten out of ten choice. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In present day Japan, a man is forced to play an otome game by his sister. He unwillingly plays this day and night, hoping to reach 100% completion of the game. Throughout his playthrough, he can't help but express his disdain for the characters and just about anything from the game. Damn, a few that, that's me like, that's me watching JoJo's bro. Like I just, I have the disdain from for all the characters. I can't say nothing from watching it. That's me with almost every romance anime too. Like Golden Time, oh my God, hate it. Toradora, Love and Chubane, oh yes. Disdain every single one of the characters, the plot, the story. It's garbage, they're trash. Two days doing nothing but playing the game, he finally completes it. At this point, he is now too hungry to even stand up. He tries to get to the convenience store but he falls from the stairs in the apartment complex he lives in and loses consciousness. I'm interested. We're going to we're going to keep watching this. We're going to keep watching this. I'm kind of interested. Wait, I saw that 69% of y'all have not subbed up yet. So what are y'all doing? Sub up and join the fam. <laughs> In another world lies Holfort Kingdom. A young boy named Leon Faux Bartfort wakes up from a dream. He finds himself in the Did middle of Did he name Bartfort? Leon Faux Bartfort wakes up okay. from a dream. He finds himself in the middle of a vast green field. He hurries home only to be reprimanded by his parents. The boy's circumstances are unfortunate. Being the son of a mistress, he, together with his brother, mm. is managed to live in the storage shed instead of the main house. In this mm. world, he inhabits, women have power over everything. It's women in power! Andrew Tate would hate this one now. <laughs> yeah, this is Andrew Tate's least favorite anime. Oh yeah, he could he could not watch this one. It's a matriarchal society that they live in. During a conversation with his brother, Leon regains a few of his memories from another life, that of the life he lived in modern-day Japan. He mm -hmm. specifically remembers the details about the otome game he played. Judging from This nigga had a whole life to live and the only details he remembers is a video game. That's a that's L life. That's an L life right there. That's a, that's a garbage life. Details of this current world he lives in, it's the same as the Otome game world. The young boy concludes that he now lives in a world of the Otome game. It has now been 10 years since Leon regained his memories. Whoa. He recalls that the Batfort family didn't appear in the game. Basically, he's a background character or um mob. He this nigga's a lame! He's a lame! He's a lame! Oh lord. He spends his days peacefully. Being a mob this nigga's a mob. A <laughs> this nigga's a Minecraft villager. <laughs> a bad thing after all. No conflicts, no drama, just the pure bliss of everyday life. One day though, he's peaceful. What is that? Disturbed. Lady Zola, his father's wife, informed him that she arranged for him to be married to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like the black guy from Baki's wife, bro. <laughs> oh, nah. Oh, nah. They did him so dirty. <laughs> they did him so dirty. <laughs> that's, that's, that's disgusting. Oh, my goodness. He had never met. Their family is poor, so this marriage is one way for them to survive. Leon is against it, especially since the woman is 50 years old and has been married seven times. Not to mention all of her husbands have died in battle. According She's literally a curse. She has cursed cooch. How are you ugly, disgusting, and with cursed cooch? That is ridiculous. According to Lady Zola, no one wants to marry a man after he's turned 20. Leon is already considered- She's a pedo too! Wait, are everyone pedos? No one wants to ma marry a man after he turns 20? What type of- what type of nonsense is this? That someone even wants to marry him. Leon absolutely does not wish to get married in this way, so he thinks of a means to get the money. If he does acquire some money, then the marriage will be off. 
he sets off to the skies looking for something that the Otome Games protagonist would suppose. This nigga look like look for this, <laughs> this nigga turned to Ash Ketchum. The arranged marriage off. Unfortunately, while on his way to get this thing, the flying boat he's riding on gets caught up in a tornado. Jesus! In the process. Luck, though, is still on Leon's side. He makes it to the place where the thing can be found. Now, all that's left for him to do is acquire it. Using his Otome game knowledge, he navigates through the area smoothly. Soon enough, he finds the thing. An ancient spaceship. He gets inside and makes Wait, hold on. Uh, I feel like there's so, there's so many things happening right now. <laughs> they went from they went from living like they were in 1632 to a spaceship. Well, how do we how do we advance this far in technology already? Into the control room. When he reaches it, a robot set to destroy intruders welcomes him. He battles the robot. What is this and destiny? The tricks that he has up in his sleeve. According to the robot, the old civilization was destroyed when faced with a new breed of humans who possessed magic powers. I'm not going to lie, this title kind of did this anime dirty because I feel like this is this is like better than what the title has led on. You know? You know like like when you say date when like the dating simulator world kind of kind of like sold it a little bit. You feel me? Like that made it sound a little bit more whack than like what it was. Am I the only one who thinks that way? Like this this kind of this kind of seems it was my favorite anime last season. Oh, for real? Yeah, the name the name is garbage, but this don't look too bad for real. The robot's duty is to destroy new humans, Leon himself included. Leon, however, does not let this happen. He manages to defeat the robot before it can end him. Now he can take the ancient spaceship. But soon after this, he faints, having sustained injuries from fighting the robot. It turns out it I has already been three months since Leon set off to find the ancient spaceship. His family hasn't heard from him at all, and Lady Zola presumes him dead. One day, much to everyone's surprise, Leon comes home in the ancient spaceship filled with many treasures Dale. and Luxion, Leon's robot, Damn! No, 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 no. He called. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I might have to watch this for real. I might have to watch this for real. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I might have to watch this for real, bro. Who operates the ancient spaceship and the one Leon defeated has looted along the way. His parents are very happy to see him, but Lady Zola cannot save. Yeah, she's him. a hater. She is not happy that he is alive and well for some reason. And with she's that, a hater. Leon is set to attend Holford Academy, the academy where most of the Otome game takes place. Place. Okay, let's rate these niggas for real. Let's academy. rate them. Let's rate them. He ugly. I don't know what he got going on with his hair. The guy in purple, he looked like a he looked like a thought. Like just just like a thought. Like like he looks like a woman. He looks like a thought. I just not much I could say about that. He he looked like bro. He wants to be a nerd so badly, bro. He looked like he hate life. He looked like the main character. Like if there was an MC of the group and he looked like the pretty boy. Like he, the the wannabe badass pretty boy, you know the combination of the two. They all else for real. Main character look better. Main character smarter. Main character richer. Main character got main, main character dick bigger. Main character main character stronger. Main character you you feel me? That main character's a murderer. We know women love murderers. <laughs> Where most of the Otome game takes place. It looks like his plan to live peacefully as a mob continues. Leon is now an independent knight. He has also found an uninhabited island on his way home from acquiring the ancient spaceship. Good things keep this coming. This nigga has an island to himself? Why you may ask? It's because he cleared an unexplored dungeon. Where his cock at? Where's his penis? Where's his nipples at? Stop hoeing, my man. <laughs> Show the prince! <laughs> and discovered an uninhabited island. It's Leon's first day of school at Holford Academy. Here, he will learn about noble etiquette, basic adventuring skills, and magic, all okay. while looking for a future wife. At the school entrance, he comes across the Otome Games love interest. They are all what you call Bishonen or Ikemen. He also sees the rich girl antagonist and Prince Julius's fiance, Angelica. After the entrance ceremony, he spots the girl slapping one of the love interests, Prince Julius. He overhears their conversation. I mean, she mid anyway, so I don't know why you were talking to her to the first place. I mean, look at those eyes, man. Look at that hairstyle. Like, what are you doing, bro? And recognizes that it is an in-game event. There's one difference from the game, though. The girl involved is not the main heroine of the game. This She's is a yeah. different girl. But Leon is sure they look damn near the same. Has seen the girl before. Leon easily befriends some of the students, 
such as Daniel and Raymond. They talk about finding girls of their own standing, coming from not so popular but still noble families. So is this when the anime turns mid? He went from being a badass three, not even three, a minute and a half ago to trying to find a girlfriend. This is where the anime turns mid? Search is far from over. One of Leon's friends hosts a tea party, so he's doing his best to prepare for it. While talking, the group observes the prince and one of his friends from a distance. A bunch of girls is surrounding the prince, asking about his tea party. Angelica arrives to talk to the prince, but the prince stands his ground and asks her not to intimidate him. The prince turns his attention to Marie, inviting her to his tea party. She looked like a little girl, bro. The prince is a, the prince is a pedo. The prince got some EDP in him. Angelica objects to this, saying that Marie would be out of place at the party. The prince asserts himself, and Angelica is left with no choice but to allow it. Leon recognizes that what is happening is an event from the game. Still, once again, the girl involved is not the main protagonist. He can't help but wonders what's going on. While he's curious, he doesn't interfere with any of these. She's like three foot two. Involved with any of the characters from the Otome game. All he wants is to live his life as a mob character peacefully. At school, Leon has had a newfound love for tea parties. He loves them so much that he even throws one himself. He what the hell? He invited a Baron's daughter, but she brought along her friends and their servant. What are what are these? Y'all can't see them. Y'all can't see them. Look at these monstrosities. What is that? He invited a gopher. She started, she got a, she got kicked out the cast of Ratatouille for being too ar ugly. This is nonsense. When she arrived, the party's attendees do not what exactly is, behave as expected, uh, with one of them being rude enough to demand more tea. One of them even says that being at Leon's party was a decent way to pass the time. After Leon's guests have left, he notices a group of girls bullying another girl. Luxian says that the girl is there on a scholarship. The poor girl must have been bullied because she is a commoner. Leon recognizes her as Olivia, the game's protagonist. Although he swears never to get involved with the game, Leon still invites her to tea. Olivia accepts his invitation. She is a very polite girl, saying that the snacks and tea are really good. She mentions that she wants to study magic more, but she doesn't know anything about the Academy's rules and So it looks like the anime is turning mid, guys. The anime is turning mid. No! No, it's turning mid! It's turning mid! I'm already seven minutes in. I have to keep watching it. I can't, I can't stop it. I'm already seven minutes in. Spoken agreements. Leon consoles her and responds that there is one person she can count on. This person is actually Leon's older sister, Jenna Faux Bartford. Jenna advises Olivia to introduce herself to the most important girls in her class. Mm. In order to do this, she must approach one of the important girl's followers and give her gifts, such as sweets from popular shops. Olivia worries about- So the only way for them to be treated with respect is to dick suck the people at the top? That's life, that's life, yep. Now that I think about it, yeah. This as it might be expensive. Jenna suggests having Leon pay for it instead. Leon disagrees with this suggestion right away, but he still does it in the end. The most important girl in Olivia's class turns out to be Angelica. Olivia gives her the sweets. They weren't the same, I thought they were the same girl. <laughs> I thought they were the same girl. <laughs> I was thinking she was Angelica this whole time. And Angelica accepts them, saying that she'll allow her to sit quietly in the corner as long as she knows her place. She clarifies that she is not trying to push Olivia out of the academy, explaining that she doesn't enjoy such crude behavior. Hey, the supposed antagonist isn't villainous after all. Olivia mentions that it was Leon who advised her to approach Angelica in this way. Angelica knows him as the one who acquired a barony on his own. Leon is adamant about staying a mob character, but is he really one? He's I mean, Leon bro, can you tee up for real? You haven't been badass in five minutes. In five minutes, in like these anime reviews, is like three, four episodes. Come on, Leon. <laughs> Can, wh where, where's the murder at? Okay. Where's the where's the straps? I want some killing. Come quite the talk of the town. Daniel and Raymond skip exploration class, leaving Leon all on his own. To make matters worse, he is classmates with all of the game's love interests and even the protagonist herself. But before they could all start exploring, Angelica causes a scene. Ange Angelica got some package on her. Like she just looked like she carries baggage everywhere. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe she. Maybe she has something going on at home. Maybe she. I think she just carries baggage, bro. There might be something wrong with her, like internally. Yeah. She confronts Marie, saying that she and the prince are off. Angelica. I want y'all to look at Maria real quick. Look at Maria. 
She's literally dressed like a little girl. There is nothing grown about this little girl. She's a child. There's nothing, there's nothing non-childlike about her. Prince Marie saying that she and the prince are of different social standings and she should know her place. The prince defends Marie from Angelica. While they watch the commotion, Leon asks Olivia about Marie. It turns out that Marie is the daughter of a poor Viscount. The rest of the prince's entourage interrupts Angelica's tirade and they all set off to do some exploration. Are they about to run, are they about to run a, a, um, a, a choo-choo on Maria? Cause that's what this looks like. Why? Are they all on Maria's coach. There's nothing special about Maria. She don't even look good. Oh my God! Never trust people in high positions of powers. They all like kids. Set <laughs> 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 off to do some exploration. Angelica is humiliated by this. Meanwhile, at the dungeon, Leon partners up with Olivia. They do a bit of exploring until they run into huge monsters guarding an enormous chunk of crystals. Okay. Olivia panics and suggests that they get help from others. But what happened to your friends, Raymond and R Raymond and uh, Daniel? Y'all, y'all really let you really let your th friends for a thought that fast? Is that really what we doing? That's crazy. Leon says that the two of them will be used as meat shields anyway, so there's no point in waiting for them. To Olivia's amazement, Leon easily defeats the monsters using the sword Luxian has made for him. Okay. But just when Leon and Olivia thought everything is over, the monsters suddenly increase in numbers. It is at this moment that the prince and his entourage- I'm feeling mid. This feels like some mid. Mmm arrive. They ensure the two that they will handle things from there. Angelica and her group arrive later. Despite being supposedly good at battle, the prince still gets a scratch. Angelica worries over him, and so does Marie. Marie uses healing magic to make his injury disappear. They got magic? He's surprised, as he doesn't know that she can use healing magic. Marie tells him she wants to keep her ability a secret. Still worried, Angelica rushes over to the prince, but he acts coldly towards her. Angelica is again humiliated by this. It turns out that the prince and Leon are also injured in the battle. That scar looks crazy. I don't, why does that scar make me feel uncomfortable? Why does this, like, why does this looking at this make me feel so uncomfortable? I don't know what it is about this. But, like, these bites, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it doesn't, like, it's not, like, gory where I'm like, oh, but it just, like, oh, it gives me a weird feeling. Yeah, it just doesn't look right. Injured in the battle. Olivia instantly cures his injury using healing magic, saying that magic is the only thing she's good at. She also mentions that she became a scholar at the academy because someone discovered her talent. Meanwhile, as they talk away from everyone, Maria wears an evil grin. With Maria's bag and textbooks burned. Okay, so Maria, so Maria is a manipulator. We got that. That's cool. They're all being manipulated. Imagine being a prince and getting manipulated by a six-year-old. <laughs> the prince turns to Angelica, perhaps insinuating that she has something to do with this. According to the prince, the girls who were found at the scene said that it was her who ordered them to do it, but Angelica denies this. But even so, the prince orders her to stay away from them, especially Maria at the academy. Meanwhile, Don't no one want to be Maria near no Mar Mar Maria! Raymond are hanging out and talking about how some guys just got engaged. Leon's friends are somewhat affected by this since the girls involved are girls who were nice to them. They get dejected over this, saying it's the end for them. Leon joins them by saying that he sends out invitations to tea parties, but they just get ignored. They also talk about Prince Julius's recent issues. Rumor has it that Maria is getting bullied, and the one behind it all is Angelica. Prince mm. Julius is rumored to get mad at Angelica for this. Mm. Leon recalls that there was also an in-game event wherein Julius got mad at Angelica. Still, it's not supposed to happen until much later. While at the library, Leon asks Olivia, Where's the- when, when did the- when did cheese get clapped? You know? What, when did- you feel me like- mm. When when does like you feel me like out of, out of curiosity you know I like I'm not I'm not begging for it. like I'm not looking for it just like curious you know yeah what Maria is like and she mistakenly assumes that he must like her Olivia in return ask him whether he likes girls such as Maria Olivia remembers the only time she talked to her she says that I hate girls like you suddenly they hear voices coming from a secluded area in the library it seems like a couple is there to have some fun oh Mom finally curious to find out who these people could be Olivia follows reminding Leon that it's bad to peek at others no it's not they're surprised when they find Maria in anime
molesting another guy. What's <laughs> worse, this guy is one of the princess aunties. <laughs> yes, sir. Where's 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 the camcorder at? Where's the cameras? Big yikes. Maria walks down the hall with an evil grin on her face. She feels relieved that the dumb girls are no longer bullying her, thanks to Prince Julius. The prince and Jilk, a member of his entourage, meet her in the hallway. They inform her that they will pay for her to have a personal servant. Of course- Okay, they, these niggas don't- these niggas are doing too much. They're doing way too much for this little girl. Of course, she is more than happy to hear this. Lucky girl. Now all she has to do is act cute and helpless, and these clueless boys will be at her mercy. Maria's inner thoughts reveal that she, like Leon, knows that the world they live in is an Ultimate Games world. Can yeah. she be reincarnated in this world like him? Angelica- Mmm! So she knows this is- Oh! So we got two reincarnated people. Okay, okay, that's kind of cold. That's kind of cold. That and that, that that explains a lot too. Okay. Angelica gets furious when she hears about Maria getting her own personal slave. It seems to her that Prince. I thought it was a servant. Hold up, how did we go to servant to slave like that? I I, I could have sworn I heard the word servant this first time. What's going on here? deeply in love with Marie. She mulls over how she has lived her life to serve the prince, and now this happens. On the other hand, Jenna visits Leon in his room and asks about Marie. He tells her that she's quite close with Prince Julius and other men as he thinks about seeing her kiss another guy. Jenna asks mm. him whether or not he's involved in Marie's bullying. Leon answers that he's not. Jenna reminds him that since Prince Julius will be eventually succeeding the throne, getting into his good side will make him set for life. Bro, shut up. Just kill him, bro. Like, there's not enough murder, Boy, man. Harry, getting on the prince's bad side will not end. Murder him. The first semester there's no cameras. There's no cameras. You can get away with it, I promise. Murder. All he did was host tea parties and explore some dungeons. Leon and his friends plan to get girlfriends with the academy hosting a party. And apparently, some nobles from the backwoods found found theirs at this party. During their first try, the girls they approached downright declined them. While still they really got on their knees for some thoughts, bro. Oh! Oh, this is so, this, oh, this is so mid. Tasting his bitter defeat, Olivia approaches Leon, saying there's an emergency. It's once again Angelica versus the prince and his entourage. Here we see the prince acting as douchey as usual towards Angelica. Out of pure love and devotion for the prince, Angelica tries Angelo, to- Angelo, uh, Angelica, just give up already, bro. Like, we get it. Oh, I love the prince. I've been serving him. Yada. We don't care. We don't, like, 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 get over it. Okay. There's, there's a lot. There's plenty, plenty of more princes in the sea. Find you an Indian prince, okay? You don't have to find you. You don't have to find you this prince. You can find a whole another one. Like, in her side, she says that she saw Maria holding hands with a man that was not the prince. Prince Julius, however, refuses to listen to what she has to say. It seems he is tangled up deeply in Maria's web of lies and deceit. Angelica asks the whole entourage whether or not they are aware that she is involved with all of them. One of the guys replies that he is well aware of this, but still he wishes to protect Maria. One by one- So they all- they- so they're all really- they're aware of- oh my god, this is- <sighs> The guys of the prince's entourage start confessing their feelings for Maria. It seems like they have no problem with her getting involved with all of them. Angelica has suffered enough humiliation to even get to this point. Her fiance outright claiming his love for another woman in public is that's her fiance. Oh my god, this turned into a what the fuck? This man fell in love with a child, bro a blow to the gut. Onlookers are now talking amongst themselves, saying their engagement will now probably be called off. She throws her glove at Marie, challenging her to a duel. This like, she's doing too much, bro. It's also an event in the anime game. In the game, the character with the highest relationship score with the protagonist duels in the protagonist's place. This time, though, everyone from the prince's entourage volunteers to duel in Maria's place. Angelica glances around looking for support, but no one seems concerned enough to step up for her. Leon recalls that in the game, if the protagonist wins the duel, Angelica will eventually marry a backcountry lord with a terrible personality and live a miserable life. And you marry her! He's been reincarnated into the Automa Games world. Leon swore to himself that he would never interfere with the game's story and remain a mob character. But at this moment, seeing the look of despair on Angelica's face and the knowledge that eventually her life can be ruined, 
He I'm smelling mid. Of blind eye to it. He steps up and volunteers I'm smelling to mid. Olivia and his friends call him out on this, but he says that he really hates the love interests. Besides, he had Luxian look into Maria's background and found out that she is truly not from Haltford Kingdom, like him. When mm. he asks Angelica what her demands are for the opposing party, all Angelica wants is for Maria to stay away from the prince. As for the prince and his entourage, Maria's demand is for Angelica to stop being so cruel. Having completed the game, Leon already knows beforehand what Maria's demands are, commenting that she's not even copying the words from the game correctly. Leon Damn. suggests that they do an armored battle, to which the other party agrees. He also proposes that it's him versus the five, the prince and- Oh, he handling five men at one time? Damn. Damn. Okay, he living the dream, Loki. His entourage. Leon seems way too confident at this, and the school are already betting against Leon even before the duel has started. Talk about being unpopular. Meanwhile, Angelica urges Leon to withdraw from the duel. Word has come to her that his room has been vandalized. She's Dang. She's very considerate, insisting that she'll be fine and there's no need for him to suffer. Leon refuses to back down, not after he can finally have the chance to trample those that he dislikes. The day of the duel arrives. And as expected, everyone is cheering for the prince. The prince's entourage has their- Nah, look at these whack-ass Power Ranger wanna be ass niggas, bro. Like, what, what is this on his forehead, bro? This man has a kitchen knife as a, 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 as a, as a hairstyle. This is, this is, this is dumb. This is, this is stupid. I don't know what else to use, words to use to describe this. This is ridiculous. Flashy armor's out, but the students are laughing at Leon's armor for being old and outdated. That the thing is so thick. Leon is Brad Fofield, the purple-haired guy previously seen kissing Maria. Leon ends up using a shovel as his weapon. <laughs> even if Leon has a weird weapon, Brad loses in an instant. Leon's style is against Greg Foe Seberg, another one of the prince's entourage. The outcome is the same. Leon wins. He also <laughs> has Chris via Arclight, who accuses Leon of unchivalrous behavior after he fires- Imagine him. finishing off five men before you get finished once. That is crazy. That is, that is some elite porn star level-ish, you feel me? Like- this man Leon, he, he's a, he's a goat at what he does. There's there's a lot of things he he could he could really start his own. Let's let's keep finishing this mid. Chris Leon coolly responds that they're only weak and didn't take him seriously in this fight. Jill convinces Jenna to plant explosives throughout Leon's armor right before the third match. Knowing that Jenna will never do anything to get on Prince Julius's bad side, they send her to destroy Leon. She's also angry with her brother, as he's he hell-bent on angering the prince. After all, you're gonna turn against your brother for real? All. Doing so can affect not only Leon's future, but also their whole family. This dirty move shows that the prince's entourage seems to be desperate to win this. Leon finds out about this when Luxian reports to him. Unfortunately for Jilk, though, he still gets beaten by Leon. Even okay, good. Even though armor seems okay, good. Good. He, he still defeated these nobles. Go, Leon. Subscribe to watch more what? Like this. That's not how you end a video. I got no type of conclusion. I got no type of uh, closure. What the f This was mid, bro. This was so mid, bro.